Okay, I'm just going to start off by talking about what the National Institute of Health just published recently about probiotics and the prevention and treatment of COVID, current prospects, perspective, and future prospects. And um, this is, um, it's hard to, to, to dispute the things they're talking about in a negative way. And it's up to you to read it. I'm not going to say what they say, but... Um, it sound you know go to the conclusion which is way down the bottom here and um, where is it? all you got to do is look it up National Institute of Health and Probiotics for COVID and here is the conclusion I focus in on it maybe you can read it I don't know uh, you could stop there and read it if you can now it's um, I'm going to go into why this is important in regulating your health because there is some specific chemistry that relates to this that hasn't been taken into account yet in its totality. I think they're starting to get there, but slowly. Okay, we're going to be talking about transition metals and how bacteria work with those transition metals to create these transporters that bring things and deliver things back and forth in your body. And that's exactly where they are, right in here. These are the transition metals and they are separate from the rest of the periodic chart. And the reason is, is they have the deep levels of electron attachment. That's why they can carry things back and forth and, and deliver and pick up waste and deliver nutrients and so forth. For. They are exist in your blood, and I have some experiments that I'd like to see done, where we can tell what bacteria affect what transition metals, and they understand that the bacteria and the transition metals work together. Now, this I just want to show you this. I, I was deep in I'm in chemistry, physics, all of that stuff. I did this in um, semiconductors my my whole life. That was my my whole life was in this. This is 50 years ago where these papers are from. And I realized back then that there, everything was a dipole. And this is the new theory that I, it's not new for me, <laughs> but it's new for the rest of the world, is Bohr is no more. Bohr model does, never worked with one gigantic positive nucleus and little bitty tiny negatives all around. It just didn't work. The nucleus is made out of positives and negatives. And the electrons are also made out of positives and negatives. One side is dark, we've never seen it before, because it's always been hidden inside of a crust of glowy particles, and those particles Okay, the glowy particles surround all the dark particles. The only reason we ever saw this is because we accelerated the light and it actually broke the black and the white apart. So this is the new model of electron flooding, and it works absolutely flawlessly for the transition metals. But let's get back to this, and we're going to get into all, everything, but this is important. Transition metals are required cofactors. You need them to work with other things for many proteins that are critical for life, and their concentration within the cells is carefully maintained to avoid both deficiency and toxicity and the things that maintain them are the bacteria I'm, I'm serious the bacteria are the things that maintain them uh, did I go over this yet this is about roles of the metals in human health and how they're beginning to study them and metal ions are required to keep the human body healthy because several critical biological functions in humans depend upon their presence and their absence or scarcity may lead to disease. These metals, I believe, are created and manipulated by bacteria. And this is what the end result is, is that these are the transition metals, and these are the ones right in here. You see this? Um, scanium is um, 21, 22 is titanium, um, and it goes right down the line. It's I, You probably don't have to know about this, but well, just let's just talk about um, iron. This gets very confusing, and I, I, I'm not good at explaining these details, but iron, everybody knows that you have iron in your blood. Well, what does iron do? It's in he, uh, hemoglobin, hematite. 
hematite is red blood and the ferrous and ferric all right well what's the difference one of them has a plus two state and one of them has a plus three state and what does that mean these are oxidation states two extra oxygens and three extra oxygens so i've always talked about feo fe2o2 and fe2o3 the o2 and o3 are the oxidation states when you have the o2 it's you're you're low on oxygen and when you take in an extra oxygen it becomes ferric which is the o3 state and it doesn't exist in these other states or, or it does but very rare this is the two common states of iron in your blood and all of these other things have attachments to all kinds of different molecules they can make calcium grow and salts and all of these things oxygen you know the whole nine yards has to be dealt with with these transition metals they transfer transition things back and forth in your body absolutely critical when research worlds collide <laughs> all right i'm going to wrap it up with this but we need to do some tests but anyway this is the research i've been doing recently on bacteria and fungi and so forth in the body and how it affects the immune system yeast mold bacteria parasites toxins all those different things what do they do and where are they in the body and what, what do they affect in the body so here's the basic components we have to deal with the membranes everything is separated by a membrane if that membrane is not intact like a rubber plastic bag and there's holes in it you're done and there'll be holes in it if you don't have the bacteria bound in that membrane to create the mucus to keep things from penetrating all right now the bacteria strains because there's thousands of different strains of bacteria in your body and they all regulate different enzymes and different catalysts which create different amounts of these byproducts which in this case is a transition metals now so where are these located in the body what types live in what areas and there will all be different because of the ph and because of the uh, all kinds of different characteristics of that particular organ now other bioorganisms outside that are now inside well whatever that means i can't remember what I, <laughs> now the ph extremely important what are the ph levels in these areas of the body because they're not the same in every area of the body your kidneys different ph than your 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 heart i'm i'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not positive i don't know if these tests have ever been done i have no idea but now they know that there's an interstitial highway and that means that all of the sacs and little bags of fluids that are in your body that I think at one time they thought they might have been separate. They seem to have like a highway running through them so that the bacteria or whatever can swish its way through your body. It seems. Again, need to look into that. Inflammation, which leads to heat and which is a change in pH. Anytime there's heat, your pH changes. I'm, I'm almost 100% sure you cannot have a heat change without having a pH change because it's electric change and um, immune system creates heat why and why does the pH change and if could we change the pH to drop the heat I don't know there's lots to talk about acids salts cures who knows because but I'm telling you pH is nothing more than adding electrons and if you, as you go up in the pH, to um, the higher you go in the pH, I'm pretty sure you're going to have more heat. If you're starting with the same mass and you add electrons, it increases the heat. Now, tests we need to do, we need to find out what body parts have what kind of membranes and what kind of bound bacteria and yeast and so forth in healthy versus diseased tissues and if, if there's any other organisms that seem to want to inhabit there for good or bad reasons and a quantity of good and bad and tests for spectrum analysis, brightness and quantity culture of bacteria and tests for pHs 
how that affects things. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Once you get started, it's just, it is a rabbit hole. Everything's a rabbit hole. There is no end to anything. It's the start of every single thing there is, is, is always today. <laughs> right? It's like Groundhog Day all over again, but it's always new because so much is misunderstood. <laughs>